Welcome to Pleasant Green Sunday School. This is Lesson 7 for January the 15th, 2017. We're in Unit 2 today entitled Praise From and for God's Creation. Our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly uh, is Good and Plenty. The devotional reading is taken from Psalm 66 verses 1 through 5. Our background scripture is taken from Psalms 65 and Psalm 67 verses 6 and 7. Our print passage today is taken from Psalm 65 verses 1 and 2 and verses 9 through 13. Our key verse reads, You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. That is Psalm 65 and 5 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to become aware of the natural and human factors responsible for our well-being. Number two, to feel gratitude for the ways that God meets our physical needs. And number three, praise the Creator through good stewardship of our material blessings. We have three outlines today that uh, we will be studying. The first one is entitled, Praise for the Provider. The second outline is entitled, Precipitation from the Provider. And then our third outline is entitled, Pastures from the the provider. I certainly thank and praise God for this yet another opportunity that the Lord has blessed us to come together to study his word and we hope that uh, you have been uh, following our Sunday school lessons online. We have been um, teaching from the book, uh, from the books of the Psalms Uh, and today we are uh, yet another Psalm 65. Uh, we want to talk about that a little bit from the uh, lesson at, uh, standard. I want to read a little bit of this background and then we will read a little bit uh, from our lesson quarterly. Many Psalms have superscriptions. Uh, Psalm 65 is one that does and the superscription introduces what follows as being a psalm and song of David. Thus King David, the sweet psalmist of Israel, uh, is the author. I want you to look at uh, uh, 2 Samuel chapter 23 verses 1 through 7. The introduction also indicates it was to the chief musician. This is more than a dedication. It serves as permission for the composition to be used by those who orchestrated the musical praise for Israel's national celebrations. The psalm serves to reveal the heart of the man whom the Lord selected to be king of his chosen nation, a man after God's own heart. The Israel of David's era seems to have been a nation of singers and instrumentalists. I want you to look at First Chronicles Uh, chapter 13 verse 8 they had no electronic amplification they had no technology to allow projection of words on a screen and Israelite worship did not feature songs that people had been listening to all week on personal devices instead worship featured heartfelt songs sung from memory sung with passion and conviction Psalm 65 seems to have been one of those. And a little bit more about this Psalm uh, 65. It is a psalm of expectation. The writer was expecting God to bless him and thus thank God in advance for the blessing's arrival. This psalm can be described as blended worship. For it is hard to praise God for what we for what he will do without acknowledging what he has already done. This psalm, as we said, is a psalm of 
David. I want to make note, uh, as we have been uh, teaching and studying in in the Psalms, uh, the uh, issue of history is something we need to reflect a little bit on, uh, and, and I want to make a couple of points uh, about history. Someone has to know the history. That's very important. Uh, the people of God need to know the history. Uh, we also need to know who God is and what he has already done and what he has promised to do. Uh, and I want you to look at James chapter 1 uh, verses 17 and 18. And sometimes uh, perhaps we have forgotten that we brought nothing into this world. And perhaps we have grown insensitive to the grace of God. God has been good and is so good to us that we have sometimes a tendency to get mad when we don't have or we lack. Nevertheless, God is faithful. And so as we look at Israel, we want to be reminded, uh, and I, I have to do this when I am uh, in the Old Testament reading the history of Israel I have a tendency to think about what the Lord has done in my life uh, where he has brought me from and it also uh, this psalm we won't have time to get into it today but Psalm uh, 65 is also a millennial uh, restitution of the earth's spiritual blessings are realized as well as temporal and material benefits. Uh, Psalm 65 through Psalm 68 describe the time for God to restore everything as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. And you can see some reference in Acts chapter 3 verse 21. And I just want us to keep this in mind as we talk about uh, good and plenty. I want us to really think about uh, what God has done and this is the praise and this is the worship uh, that awaits God uh, from uh, his people uh, if you will uh, because they understand David understands what the Lord has done so we want to begin with this first outline praise for the provider this is uh, Psalm 65 verse 1 and 2 and I want to read this from the NIV translation praise awaits you our God in Zion, to you our vows will be fulfilled. You who answer prayer, to you all people will come. So the psalmist began this psalm with a proclamation of celebrating our God. The opening statement in verse 1 suggests to us that praise is fitting and due to God. It is not just the right thing, but a must to the great God who rules uh, heaven and earth from Zion. Praise should be an automatic response to the God who answers prayer. He forgives our sins and provides spiritual favor upon us. It is to God that his people's vows are to be fulfilled. Uh, the fact that all flesh shall come before God highlights the fact that God is God of all and for all. This theme and thought is scattered throughout the rest of the psalm as uh, David wrote about the ends of the earth and the farthest seas, the mountains and the tumult of people, uh, and the farthest points of the earth from east to west. While at the time of the writing there was an emphasis on the building of the temple where the people expected God to, to dwell, it is the Christian's focus that Zion is a reference to more than a spiritual or I'm sorry a physical temple uh, we believe that it is a reference to the spiritual dwelling place of God the key is that we have access uh, to and a relationship with God for he purges our iniquities and then not only chooses us but also causes us he puts uh, into place mechanisms allowing us to come closer to him uh, for this reason only to God should we make vows uh, that he may establish 
uh, uh, our righteousness. And I, I want to make a couple of points here. I want to give you some scripture about vows. The scripture is clear that it's best that we not make a vow to God than to make a, a, a vow and not pay it. Uh, when I was looking back uh, uh, into this, uh, these vows over in Numbers chapter 6 verse 21 and uh, Numbers chapter 30 verse 2, uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 23 verse 21 through 23, uh, Psalm 116 verse 18, uh, and so, and also Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 5, I was thinking about the sin that we commit with our mouths to God, that we promise him and that we vow uh, that, that, that we are going to do various things and, 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 and we don't do those things. But in this psalm, in our text today, uh, uh, David is recounting here that to you our vows will be fulfilled. In other words, we're going to do God what we said we were going to do regarding you and that's very important for us uh, I'm not I'm not talking about resolutions and all of these types of things but we have a tendency as the Old Testament will help us to understand I hope you go back and look at those scriptures uh, uh, don't commit this type of sin with your mouth don't tell God that you're going to do something and, and then you not fulfill uh, that vow. So, as we said earlier, the scriptures is clear. It's better uh, not to make a vow at all uh, than to make a vow to promise God that we're going to do something and we and we don't do it. And and you have heard as well as I have that many have told God that if He would deliver them, they would serve Him, and uh, if He would bless them, they would do this. Why do we have to do these things? Uh, 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 David says this in Psalm 23 he says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord period we should dwell in the house of the Lord regardless of of what we see and uh, that God may do and he may not have done we should be willing to serve God because God is God and I want you to keep that in mind because uh, that was a practice uh, in the Old Testament with Israel they promised God that they would do better that they would live according uh, uh, to his commandments and they failed uh, to do that and it caused uh, a crisis in the nation it caused uh, enemies to rise up and God punished them because they were speaking uh, and making vows with their mouths but their heart was not in the words that they were uh, 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 saying to God so I want to keep that in mind and then the second point I want to make as I saw in this outline here that that God uh, uh, he not only chooses us but he uh, also causes he puts uh, into place mechanism allowing us to come closer to him and I was I began to think about being in my right mind what kind of mechanism that might be uh, what kind of uh, uh, meditations that I'm having in my heart toward God and, and and I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit draws us he's able to to give us what we need that we might be able to please God even our prayers that uh, uh, Romans is clear I believe in the 8th chapter telling us that we don't even know how to pray uh, as we ought but the spirit intercedes uh, uh, for us with groanings too deep for words and so these mechanisms if we think about how God has drawn us closer he has shown us loving kindness and and he has demonstrated his love toward you and toward me he has been so good to us and for me that is a mechanism that that draws me closer to him when I begin to think about all of the things that the Lord has done especially when we know we have not earned to be even in this life 
keep those things in mind. There's a question asked here in the quarterly. Since God has provided for you spiritually and physically, what praise do you have that you owe God? And I was thinking about a song that uh, our choir used to sing years ago. So I owe him everything. All that I have, everything, you know, and I, I do, I, and we do, we owe God everything. Uh, uh, and so how do we uh, pay God, if you will? Well, we can't offer him anything that he doesn't all, already own. Uh, and so, but Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 helps us understand that, that, that Paul says, I beseech ye therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a, a living sacrifice. When we ta start talking about giving to God what is due him, let us start with our own lives, with our hearts, and, and with our minds, with our souls. How We should love the Lord with all our heart, our mind, and our soul. And so this is how we demonstrate to God by sacrificing our lives to to serve him uh, in truth and in holiness and and in peace this is how we have come to be in fellowship with God did you know that Jesus uh, uh, coming and dying in this world for our sins do you know that brought peace uh, based on our faith in Jesus Christ do you know that brought us peace between us and God there's no more enmity there's no strife there's no ill will because we have uh, our sins atoned for in the blood of Jesus Christ so so if Jesus can make the sacrifice for us to have this relationship uh, with the Father surely we can make the sacrifice uh, to serve the true and living God I want you to keep that in mind but the psalmist goes on David goes on Psalm 65 uh, verse 9 and 10 I want to again read this from the NIV translation talking about God you care for uh, the land and water it you enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain, for so you have ordained it. Verse 10, you drench its furrows and level its ridges. You soften it with showers and bless its crops. And, and you know, I don't know if you ever think about rain and sometimes we don't like the rain and we rather it not rain, but it is the rain that causes the crops to grow so you and I can eat and be satisfied. God took care of that for us. You ever notice how when you go in the grocery store, I, I used to think about this years ago how we can go to the grocery store 24 hours now we can we can go you and I can go to the grocery store 24 hours a day and every time you go in there have you ever seen a grocery store empty have you ever seen a produce section empty have you ever seen all of the shelves in the grocery store empty no, you have not. Even if they didn't have a particular eye, there's an abundance. And where does this abundance come from? We are able to go uh, and we're able to buy as much as we want. You know, there are some stores that advertise 10 for $10. Uh, did you know you can get 10 things for $10? 10 of the same, 10 of, of another eye. You can get 10 things. You know, so all of this multiplication and all of this substance and all of this grace and all of this surplus. And even when you leave the store as packed as we have seen grocery stores uh, that we have stood in line uh, for several minutes to 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 get to the uh, uh, checkout. But everybody in there had baskets full of food. Everybody in there had what they wanted and everybody obtained the items that they wanted because God set it up that way. You could get a basket full and I could get a basket full, but the storehouse never runs dry. And while we're in there shopping, if you ever go around the back of the grocery store, you might see some 18-wheeler uh, trucks have pulled in with more blessings. That we can't even take with us. 
is something to think about. And David is recounting how the Lord has so watered the earth and, 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 and how the Lord has caused vegetation. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Palestine, if we go back over into uh, uh, the Old Testament, uh, Deuteronomy chapter, I believe, 27, 28, you know, Israel was blessed uh, uh, for obedience and then they were cursed for disobedience and they depended on the rain uh, they, if, if God caused a drought to come up on the land they knew they were going to starve they knew that famine would be in the land so we have to appreciate the things that God have put in place uh, to sustain us but God is so gracious and caring that not only uh, cleanses us and brings us closer to him, to him, but because of his love and for our sakes, also showers us with blessings. Verse 9 highlights the fact that God has personal connection and contact with the earth. God takes great care to ensure that the waters are filled with the necessities to, to sustain life. God's preparing indicates that God did things to the land so that it will have plenty of fruits and vegetables to keep us fed. Isn't that wonderful to know? So I, we should think about these things that they taught us early on when we sat down before we, before we eat our food that we would bless it and that we would thank God for it, that we would have an attitude and a spirit of gratefulness and, and, and everybody uh, can come and eat at our houses and, and we just have pots and pans and, and food and we have freezers and, and refrigerators running over and we're able to go to these uh, uh, refrigerators and freezers and then we make a selection just like we did in the store when we purchase these items we can go in our refrigerators and freezers and we can decide what we want to eat and and some of us won't even say lord thank you for the food you know it's it's just something that we need to think about this 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 psalm here because uh, uh it is telling us here that god is the ultimate provider you know i am able to provide for my household because god is providing for me so this is how it works it is God, I believe Deuteronomy tells us that it is God that causes us to obtain wealth. It is God that uh, causes us to be able to go to the store and, and obtain these things. These, these are his attributes of his goodness and, and we have plenty of it all around us and we ought to be mindful. As I was reading this and I was thinking about the fact that we brought nothing into this world. Absolutely nothing. If I had time, we could teach about a zero because that's exactly the amount that you brought into this world. And that is exactly the, the amount that you're going to leave this earth with. So we, 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 we understand that we are able to add to the zero because God has so blessed us. This is wonderful uh, to just reflect on these things. And it, it humbles you in a way to understand that God doesn't have to do it. We don't thank him. We don't praise him all the time. We don't uh, 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 fulfill our vows to him. But he continues to be faithful because that's his nature. Even when we are faithless. So here, uh, when God brings down rain, it dissolves the high and hard clumps of dirt within the earth. Similar to what a shower from God can do to our lives washing away clumpy lumpy and bumpy spots in our lives have you seen that in your life how God has washed away some of the things that used to define us uh, as, as, as sinners he has washed these things away and he continues to do that each and every day I want you to understand this about God each and every day some part of your old nature dies while the attributes of God take hold of you we were created in the image and the likeness of God but we lost it 
we lost our substance because of sin, but now it is restored through regeneration, through Jesus Christ. And we're able to start over again. So we can thank God. We can see the signs that we are not what we used to be. And that is not because of something you did. It is because of God's goodness. It is because of his grace. David knew that God was just. David knew that God had blessed him and raised him up to be king over his people. David was a shepherd boy out in the fields tending sheep, but God brought him in, chose him from amongst his own brothers and said, this is the guy. And this is what happened to all of us. You were in sin just like I was. And God said, that's the one I want to be a part of my kingdom. And here we are, saints of God. And we ought to shout and thank God for this. This is, this is not something that they intended to do uh, uh, without anybody knowing about it. If you go back over to those scriptures I gave you, particularly in, in First Chronicles uh, you will see uh, that these individuals had instruments they intended to make not just noise, but a joyful noise because of what the Lord has done. Keep that in mind. Our last outline is entitled Pastures from the Provider. Psalm 65, verse 11 through 13. And again from the NIV translations. Translation, you crown the year with your bounty and your courts overflow with abundance the grasslands of the wilderness overflow the hills are clothed with gladness the meadows are clothed with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain they shout for joy and sing what is the psalmist saying here here as we praise God for the precipitation to help us grow let us not forget to praise God for the pastures that keep us safe and fulfilled. David, once a shepherd boy, would often make connections and reflections to and with shepherding within his psalms of praise to the Lord. First thing he did, he noted how God had royally wrapped the year with bountiful blessings. That's in verse 11. He was excited for the harvest that had come, for an abundance of good things were now flowing in his life as well as ours. And he could then acknowledge and celebrate the one who made the provisions possible. I want to just pause right here for a minute. Every day, every day of our lives, every day of the year, God has blessed us every day God has looked out for us every day God woke us up every day clothed in our right mind shall I go on every day God has uh, uh, given us the actions of our limb every day the blood has been running warm in our veins shall I go on every day God has kept us from seen and unseen day. Every day. Every day. I don't care if you're looking at the Jewish calendar or you're looking at our calendar. God has been good. In other words, he's consistent. His goodness is consistent. He's watched over us every night as we slept and slumber. This is good stuff. If you ever want to generate a praise to God, let me share this secret with you. Just start thinking about God and what he has done in your life. I guarantee you, you will come up with a praise. Think about where you were two minutes ago, yesterday, last week, last year. And I, you will only be able to go uh, uh, and think about the things that you don't know. Let's table that for a second. And let's think about the things that you don't know. What God kept from you. How would that praise look? So we can think about this thing. Let me share something with you. And, and, and we'll quickly move on. But I, w 
I remember early on when the Lord saved me. And I remember sitting in the barber shop. And I was sitting in the chair. And my mind reflected on the fact that God could have taken me while I was in my sins. That thought came to me. And I began to sit in that chair and I started shedding tears. Because I knew, I realized that if God had taken me in my sins. And I don't know why it came that day. But I never forgot that. And I I just, I had to put my hand over my mouth. And I, I just couldn't believe that I made it out. I couldn't believe. That God saved a wretch like me. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe that I made it out. While so many didn't. So these are the kinds of things that generate praise. And in this fashion God is self-sufficient. Because he created that event in your life. To create a praise to come from you. And, and, and what I love about God, he's done that time and time again, life after life. Him, her, them, us, you, all of us have a history with God. And you need to think about that. And when it comes to you, that where the Lord have brought you from, you don't need me to help you. Just say, Lord, thank you. Praise him. These people are Israel has a corporate blessing. Israel has a corporate message how the Lord brought them out. They have a history with God that goes way back to Egypt when God brought them out. So I love this, but it goes on to say an interesting Note here is that while the drops may fall in the wilderness and no one wants to dwell, the hills are not jealous but rejoice that God showers blessings even on the undesirable. And that's something to think about. In verse 13, we find the clothing and provision that God gives for the rest of the land. David took time to note how the land shouts for joy which includes singing. Verses 12 and 13, David told of four places whereby an abundance of good things flow from God. Number one, the wild places where few people live. Number two, the hills where few things can grow. Number three, pastures where sheep are kept. And four, valleys and grains grow near the river. They are all abundantly blessed and satisfied with the goodness of the Lord. And in this manner and for this reason do all come together and praise the Lord. For he has provided good and plenty for us. Do you see that in your life? What can you re- uh, can you rejoice? The question is asked here in the quarterly when someone else is blessed. Do they know that you celebrate with them? You know, I hope that as we get ready to close in this lesson, as we assemble ourselves, that we don't have to worry about uh, being jealous of one another. And God has done something different, unique, if you will, in all of our lives that uh, 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 that no uh, uh, thing is the same, a little bit different, a little bit different timing, a little bit longer, a little shorter time of deliverance, a little bit more blessings. Uh, you know, there's so many variables, but each of us, we have our own story, our own history. And the wise thing to do. If we want to build a fire, you put your log on it, and I'll put my log in the fire. The idea is to keep it burning. If we want to praise God, everybody has a log to put into the fire. 
We want to praise God, period. We want to worship him. So everybody that has a testimony that God has created for himself should not be ashamed to give that testimony. God gave you that testimony. And when people get tired of hearing your blessing and your deliverance, talk to yourself. Tell yourself over and over again, the Lord has been good to me. Whether anybody else wants to hear it or not, Tell yourself, the Lord loves me. I can trace it. I can see and how he has kept me. And in this fashion, the praise will continue. No matter where we are, no matter where we go, no matter who the crowd is, we can thank God personally. And we ought to be able to do it corporately. And so this psalm was an invitation to God to come to where the people would be so they could praise him. The people are the praise. The people are the message. The people are the witnesses. Didn't Jesus say that to his disciples? You're going to be my witness. A witness to what? What I've done for you. And in that fashion, The story and the message of Jesus Christ never dies. The praise never dies. If God keeps on blessing us, he obviously wants that praise. If God keeps on waking you up, perhaps he intended to do that, that you might praise him. If God has let you live, And you have seen all sorts of historical accounts of the good and the bad and the ugly. But God chose you to remain in it. Perhaps you are the one that have to praise the Lord. Perhaps you are the one that have enough information to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. I'm going to stop here because I feel good about this. Because it's personal for me. And the more I talk about it, the more my mind goes back and grabs another account where God has spared me. Another situation where he rescued me. And do you know what I love about this? There are many times, even in my life, that I didn't even pray for myself. I never never had a Bible, those types of things. But the faithfulness of God can be traced back long before I started thanking him and praising him for what he was already doing. Now that I'm out and rescued and saved and sanctified and all of these other things that we are, we are able to certainly look back and see God. Let me close with this prayer. Lord God, Teach us to be patient and humble and to always acknowledge you as our provider and sustainer. Let us not get puffed up in pride or become overconfident in arrogance. Lead us to the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. For thou art our provider and redeemer. In you only do we trust. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. I hope you will go back and review this lesson and review these scriptures and generate a praise to God. So until such time that the law will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.